Hi, I'm Abby from Ratings.com. For those new to the loop, we're running 100 TV models for an average of 18 hours a day to simulate 10 years of usage in just two years. We're testing the reliability of TVs by running them to the limit. At this point, we're four months into our two-year test, flocking in about a year's worth of usage. In this video, we'll go over the results we've gotten so far, including the burn-in on our QD OLEDs, differences between LG and Sony OLEDs, and failures on four TVs, including some high-end models. We'll get into all this and more, so stick around. This longevity test is our biggest test to date, with a lot of moving parts involved. We've got 100 TVs attached to Raspberry Pis, all connected to a centralized controller. This controller is cloud-based and gives us the freedom to stream whatever content we want to whatever TV we choose to stream to. It also lets us cycle the TVs on and off on a fixed schedule to replicate normal usage and the thermal stresses associated with it. We're using this controller to stream CNN since we're also looking at OLED burn-in within this test. We've learned a lot about OLED burn-in from our 2018 test, but we wanted to expand and investigate to see how OLEDs perform across a wider pool of products while still making the results of this test comparable to the original test. The benefit of CNN is its bright, static white elements and bright red elements, two factors that contribute heavily to burn-in and image retention. So with that in mind, let's jump into the actual results we've gathered so far. Look at the picture on the left and compare it to the picture on the right. No, they aren't the same picture. They're uniformity slides from two different TVs on the test, a QD OLED and a WOLED. These images, however quietly published, have blown up, going so far that LG Display used them to take a jab at Samsung Display's QD OLED technology. So is LG onto something with that claim? Is QD OLED truly worse than WOLED? Well, the answer is, Maybe? Right out of the gate, our QD OLED models in our test were showing signs of significant image retention. You can basically read the words breaking news and the outlines of the ticker box are clearly defined. These images are from two TVs, the Samsung S95B and Sony A95K. But to answer why these TVs look so bad, we first had to figure out whether these haunting images were permanently burnt in or a lingering image retention that we could remove. We switched the TVs in question off from the CNN live feed and instead put them into a sort of TV rehab mode. They still followed the same on-off schedule, but instead of being subjected to CNN, they played a series of uniformity slides, which are designed to remove temporary image retention by stimulating the thin film transistors that power the OLEDs. We've already ran these slides on the 42-inch Sony A90K just to see their impact, and you can see the clear effect these uniformity slides have had at removing image retention after running them for 144 hours, or two weeks. Unfortunately, regardless of the downtime away from the test, the ghostly outlines remained on screen. No matter what we played, CNN persisted. Leading us to conclude that the Sony A95K and Samsung S95B were likely suffering from permanent burn-in. But why? Our best guess stemmed from a small observation. See, there is a fundamental difference between QD OLED and WOLED technology. The QD OLEDs have a specialized layer that's called the quantum dot layer that's responsible for emitting all the color you see on the screen. That's what the QD in QD OLED stands for. The WOLEDs don't have this layer. Instead, they use color filters overlaid on each colored subpixel. To show you what I mean, we're gonna jump on down to the quantum dot level. Here we have the subpixels of the Sony A95K, a QD OLED. We're looking right at the quantum dot layer. You can see each of these subpixels lighting up to display the color on the screen. We're using uniformity slides here, so it's just a single color at a time so you can see the effect. So when we display a blue slide, you can clearly see the blue subpixel and green and red and so on. And you can even see the combinations of subpixels working together to display colors like purple, yellow, and green. And also white. But we'll get back to this in a second. We're gonna stay here in the subpixel realm and move on over to the LG A1, a WOLED. You'll already notice there's a key difference here. There's a new player in town. 
See that bright white square? That's the white subpixel. And if the quantum dot layer is the QD in QD OLED, then the white subpixel is the W in WOLED. Each colored subpixel in a WOLED has its own OLED backlight with a layer of film over top to ensure the correct color is displayed. You can see the colors change, showing the blue subpixel, the green, the red, and all the combinations. But this white subpixel seems to be present throughout, shining its brightest when displaying a white slide. We'll pause here on that white slide. It's pretty straightforward for the WOLED. That fourth subpixel just lets the light shine on through. But as we saw earlier, the QD OLED needs all three of those subpixels working to display white. If we circle back to our burn-in images, you'll see that the most degraded areas on the QD OLEDs were also the ones displaying static white content. So what does this all mean? Well, given these observations, it seems that the QD OLEDs were showing more burn-in because they lacked the white subpixel, which does a lot of heavy lifting to display bright white content. LG Display was quick to echo this sentiment. Recently, at their press conference, they claimed that the lack of a white subpixel meant that the QD OLED technology found in certain Samsung Display and Sony models was more prone to burn-in than the OLED panels they're famous for making. And this is technically true. I mean, they cited our images as proof, but they're lacking some important context that they could have had if they reached out to us first. We'd like to clarify something here. Our test is designed to cause TVs to have issues at a much faster rate than they normally would. But with that in mind, our early results indicate that QD OLED panels could burn in significantly faster while displaying static white content since they lack the white subpixel found in OLED models. This shouldn't impact normal TV usage, but it could be more problematic if you use your TV along with your PC. Normal TV usage won't have as much static white content since most people will play games or watch movies or even listen to tunes. But PC use is a different story. It entails a bunch of bright white static elements, which can be a problem since QD OLED panels aren't found in just TVs. They're also found in monitors. While these monitors tend to be designed for gaming, they're still used for general productivity on the computer so they might be designed to deal with this potential burn-in problem. We don't know whether this is the case, so we're adding two QD OLED monitors to the longevity test. This month, the Alienware AW3423DWF and the Samsung Odyssey OLED G8 will join the longevity test, so we can figure out whether they can better prevent the burn-in from static white elements. We plan to make them comparable to our TVs to help us determine whether what we've seen with QD OLEDs is true across multiple applications of the technology. To make sure you're in the loop with these further investigations, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and follow us on social media. Another interesting observation we've made so far relates to the differences between brands. The Sony OLEDs display much, much more image retention than the LG OLEDs. As you can see, this is true across all Sony models we have on the test. Now, we learned early in the test that Sony OLEDs receive less compensation cycles than LG OLEDs due to their implementation. Sony doesn't start the compensation cycle until the TVs have been off for four hours, whereas LG starts the cycle as soon as the TV is shut off. This means that throughout the course of a week, the Sony models received three cycles, while the LGs received 21. But was this difference in compensation cycles a limitation of our test that meant we couldn't extrapolate our findings to real life usage? To find out, we tested an LG OLED the 48-inch LG C1 that wasn't originally included in the 100 TVs. It ran three compensation cycles per week to make it comparable to the Sony cycles. And what we found was illuminating. Even running three compensation cycles a week, the LG still had less image retention than the Sony. From this subtest, we can conclude that with extreme use, LG OLEDs fare better than Sony as far as early onset burn-in is concerned. We don't know for sure yet, but at the moment, we doubt that in real life this difference will matter for consumers. We've certainly spent a lot of time talking about burn-in and not a lot of time talking about burning, which is what our Hisense U7G did to become the first official fatality of the test on January 23rd. A faulty connection between the power supply and backlighting caused a wire to heat up and progressively fail until it looked like this. 
With a wire that good looking, the power no longer went to the LED backlighting, causing them to completely shut off. Thanks to the skillful work of our top TV surgeon Pascal, the U7G is now repaired with a replaced wire, power supply, and LED driver board. We're happy to announce it went back on the test on March 7th. While this was the first TV we officially removed from the test to open up and examine, two other TVs had issues much earlier on. Notably, the high-end Sony X95J started showing signs of screen deterioration just three weeks into the test. The screen started displaying a lightened box, which has now grown to take over about a third of the screen area, causing severe uniformity issues. We're monitoring the rate of deterioration and plan on looking under the hood to get a better sense of what the mechanism of failure is. Another high-end unit, the LG G2, also has some issues, with a row of dead green subpixels appearing on February 2nd at the three-month mark of the test. And finally, our most recent casualty happens to be the subject of inquiry, which is awfully convenient. Earlier this month, on March 6th, the Samsung S95B turned off on the weekend and never turned back on. Amazingly, we managed to capture this on our security camera, and you can see it at the bottom left of the screen. We're not certain why it died, but we strongly suspect it's an issue with the power supply. Like with the Hisense, we've pulled the S95B off the test and have ordered replacement parts to try and fix the TV. As you can see, this test has been quite fruitful in opening up new side quests for investigation, and we anticipate there will only be more roads less traveled for us. Our end goal isn't to tell you which brand is the pinnacle of reliability, but rather to gather data on how, when, and why TVs break. Since we only have one unit of each model, we can't use our findings as conclusive data sets representative of every single TV in the series. Instead, we take each component failure and each new observation as a learning opportunity to dig in further to better understand how long a modern TV should last. If the work we do here sounds interesting to you, head on over to our careers page. We're always looking for curious minds to expand our team. That's our update from the first four months of the longevity test. Until next time, I'm Abby from Ratings.com, where we help you find the best product for your needs.